You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 172. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Well, hey there. Welcome back to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Amy Porterfield. And today we've got our old friend coming back to give us some Facebook wisdom. I always love when he's on the show. Rick Mulready, welcome. So good to be back on the show. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. I have a quick little funny story for you. Ooh, so tell me. At, at the time of recording this, we we uh, I just wrapped up some webinar trainings for Facebook ads for local businesses. And during the Q&A portion of one of them, some guy, some guy pops on and asks a question. He says, what's your affiliation with Amy Porterfield? <laughs> your affiliation, I, huh? I was like, what? My affiliation? Like, what kind of question is that? <laughs> what do you think I, he thought when he asked that question? I have no idea. I'm like, well, first of all, I have no, like, there's no affiliation. <laughs> <laughs> we we kind of look like we might be in business together, though. I maybe I mean, like I don't know if he was just trying to get clarity around that or what. What but. you should have said is she is my work wife and <laughs> that's how it is because we do so much together on the yeah. podcast and we're yeah. always together and right. talking about each other through the stuff, you know, getting coffee together and talking about right. work. So I could see where he makes the mistake, but that's kind of a funny word. What's your affiliation? Yeah. You should have said, I, you know, I'm her, I'm her assistant. I would have liked that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would have. Uh, I thought it was funny. I was like, uh, there's no affiliation. Like we are very, very good friends, but had to share that with you. Too funny. Yeah. Well, I am glad that we are affiliated at least for you to be a regular guest on the podcast Yes, yes. because today we have what I am calling a golden post. Now you laugh at the name because what's, the go- what's, a, what's a golden post? <laughs> Here's the deal. I needed to come up with a name for when my students or when I create a post that answers a question you get asked all the time. And it's a golden post because it's one of those posts that just, it really works for you in the sense of you can always talk about it. When you get interviewed, you could say, oh, I did a post about that. Or when you're at a networking event, the topic always comes up. So you say, I did a post about that. Go check it out at www.whatever. And so to me, everyone needs a few golden posts that they can go back to again and again. Listen, it might not be the best name, but I I have been (laughs) kicking around names for weeks. So we just went with it and it's official now because I taught it inside a list builders lab 2.0. So it now lives in there. It lives. Okay. A quick backstory. So Amy <laughs> texts me one day. I, I won't say the ideas that we've been throwing around. I'm going to say one of them. I still think it's good. I'm in the Portland airport on my way to Montana to go fly fishing. And <laughs> Amy texts me and says, what do you think about this? This name? <laughs> And I was like, that is the worst name ever. No. So backstory is Rick and I have been talking about this type of post for our students. We want our students to create these. And so we've been talking about names for it forever. And he now doesn't talk to me about it because I've sent him so many names. He's like, get over it. I don't, I don't know what we're going to call Move it. On. <laughs> Move on. But I thought a hustler post was a great idea. Like this is a hustler post, meaning you're hustling, you're getting it done. This is what your students want. And he's like, that sounds pornographic. I don't yeah. like it. Don't use <laughs> I was it. Like, I was like, where are we going with this? You, you now know that your students and your listeners are going to be like, whoa, I love that. I'm going to use the hustler post. <laughs> right. It should have been called the hustler post, but Rick said he didn't like it. So <laughs> I, I moved it. on. So I vetoed it. we're going with the golden post. So this is a golden episode. Golden episode. Exactly. And it actually is part two. So let me break it down for you. We are going to dive into getting started with Facebook ads, but it's going to be the list building series and it's going to be two parts and it's primarily for anybody who's been talking about doing ads forever. You might've even dabbled with it, but maybe got a little bit burned, but you can't really technically say I've 
ran Facebook ads consistently. And so it's for those just getting started, you know it's a big undertaking, but we're gonna break it down from start to finish. And because there's so much to cover with getting started with Facebook ads, we thought we would do a two-parter. But what we're going to do is we're just gonna do the whole episode right now, then Rick and I will decide where we're gonna cut it up because I want it to be digestible and I don't wanna overwhelm all of you. Same with Rick. So we'll figure out where the two-parter fits in here. But I think that this is going to be a great episode for anyone just finally wanting to get started. What do you think? I love it. I love it. We started talking about this just yesterday, actually, as far as like what we're going to cover. And then I was all excited about it. I think it's a great idea. Me too. What's really fun about these episodes that I do with Rick is we always get on the phone for at least a half hour before. So yesterday we talked and talked about all of you, who you are, what you need, where you're at in your business, and then how we can really support you in that place and start the conversation at the right point. So we really think this episode is going to be valuable for so many of our listeners. So what do you say we don't make them wait any longer and we dive in? Let's do it. Okay. So we're going to start at the top. And the way we've organized this is we're going to first start with your ad strategy, specifically as it relates to list building. Now, before Rick gets going, because he usually talks more than I do because he is the (laughs) expert here, hence why I bring him on. But before we get there, here's a few assumptions that we're going to make. Now, don't worry, you don't have to fit perfectly in this mold, but we wanted to make sure we were talking to the right audience with this episode. So we're going to assume that you're in your first year, maybe moving into your second year of business. You are making some money, but not in the way you really want to make money. You're probably a coach, consultant, trainer, some kind of teacher, or a service-based business. So you're doing more one-on-one than you'd like, or you're making money in a way that you'd really like to shift it to maybe an online training course and maybe use webinars or video marketing to sell your course. Or maybe you want to do a mastermind or more of a group coaching kind of thing. So you want to move away from the one-on-one and you know that you must build your list. You subscribe to my motto of the energy of your business is directly tied to the strength of your email list. And you know that you need to always be list building, but you've struggled with that and your list is kind of small. You're, you're frustrated with the lack of rapid pace with the growth of your list. And you'd like a larger list because you eventually want to promote. So that's why we're going to put a focus here on list building with Facebook ads. Did I miss anything, Rick, before you dive in? No, I think you covered it. And I'm glad that we went through the assumptions there just to kind of set the playing field here, what we're going to be talking about. Yes. And again, if you don't fit perfectly into that mold, but you want to learn about Facebook ads, definitely stay with us here. Okay, Rick, so start us off with the strategy. Yeah, this is sort of the first step in our building our beginning with uh, our Facebook ads here and getting started. This is a step that unfortunately a lot of people don't want to take. They don't want to spend the time on developing their strategy. And I don't mean to sound like, you know, this is some grand thing that you have to like map out from start to finish as far as like 50, you know, 50 different steps or anything like that. But you do need to, before you start getting any ads up or you start jumping in a power editor to set anything up, you've got to set up what your strategy is. I like to call this the game plan that you are creating because frankly, this, as I mentioned, this is the work that most people don't want to do because it takes time. Like they just want to get in there, set stuff up and and get going, which is great. I applaud that, you know, taking action. But if you start your efforts without a strategy in place, you're setting yourself up to fail. A quick story that I like to, to, to tell is that, you know what, I talked to so many people and like, why are you doing Facebook ads? Okay. I'm glad that you're doing them, but what's the why? Why are you doing them? And they're like, well, you know, I like hear my friends doing them and they're, they're getting some results. So I figured I better start. Okay. <laughs> Kudos for doing that. But that is not the reason to do them. Like you've got to have a strategy in place. Okay. So definitely take the time to sit down. I'm a very visual person personally. So I like to just map things out like on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper in my notebook and like, okay, when we're talking about the strategy, what I mean is what are the steps that we're going to set up here to take somebody on Facebook who doesn't probably doesn't know who we are, give value to them so that we can get them onto our email list, build that relationship with them, and then eventually make a sale. 
So it's it's mapping that strategy out before we even get into what's the ad going to look like, what type of ad I'm going to use, who am I going to target and setting stuff up like that. Because once you know what your strategy is, everything else becomes much easier as far as like, okay, this is who I want to attract. This is how I'm going to attract them. So that helps me with what my offer is going to be. And then that leads into, okay, this is the type of audience that I want to attract. That leads into targeting and, and so on. So you've got to spend the time about being really clear about what your strategy is going to be. And what I like to do is I like to use the exercise of working backwards from my end goal. And so what I mean by that is like, all right, let's just say our end goal is to have somebody become a paying customer. So then, okay, great. What are all the steps that need to happen in, in your business in order for that to take place? Okay. So this is good. So let's pretend that their end goal is to sell their online training program. They don't have it created yet. They're not even ready to sell it, but they know who they're marketing to and they know approximately what the topic of their course is going to be. So they've got enough information. They're just not anywhere close to being ready to sell. So if cool. they've got that information, what happens? What does it look like to work backwards? Well, I'm so glad you bring that up, Amy, because having that kind of clarity makes it a little bit easier to start with that. OK, I'm going to work backwards. So eventually, yes, I want to sell my course, but it's not ready yet. I haven't created it yet. Haven't done a webinar or anything like that. So in that case, you're like, all right, I want to just want to set myself up to succeed so that I can build my email list and attract the type of people who I want to serve and will eventually hopefully buy my my program. And so it's like it cuts out the 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 end part of our, our sales funnel here, if you will, our strategy, because we don't even have we're, we're not selling anything yet. So it's like, OK, we know. So our in, in my mind, I would go, OK, my end goal now is to build a relationship with them, with my with my ideal audience, meaning I'm giving them value via email and also maybe retargeting them with Facebook ads with additional value. So I look at my end goal here in that case as the relationship building part. I'm adding value. So now it becomes, okay, I want to get people onto my email list so that I can give value to them. How do I do that? And then, so the end goal here is people on my email list. The, then the previous step is how do I get people onto my email list? Well, they have to go to a landing page, for example, like, like lead pages. We both use lead pages in our businesses and we know that we have to have lead pages connected to our email CRM. Like, you know, whatever, ConvertKit or MailChimp or whatever we're using. And so then it's like, okay, great. We know that we have to get people to a landing page so that they can opt in and get our freebie here. How do we get people to our landing page? So again, we're working backwards and we're looking at all the steps. And the first step in all this is the Facebook ad, because this is what we're using to attract our ideal audience so that they can click on the ad, go to the landing page, look at what we're offering, make that decision whether they want to opt in or not. And then once they do, hopefully, then we can track that conversion Then they're added to our email list. And then we can start building that relationship with them via email. I like it. Nice way to break it down. Thank you. We can go in like lots of different directions on this, but from a very much basic getting started, that's how I would look at your strategy. Okay. We can look at it too. Like, and I know that you like to teach as well as talking about like, look, I haven't created a course yet, but maybe I want to do a webinar and sell that, like pre-sell that course before even creating the course. Oh, good point. Yeah. I teach the whole pre-sell strategy inside yep. courses that convert. And I also interview you in that bonus <laughs> because you did a whole pre-sell strategy. Yep. So you're saying, and this is for my students of courses that convert, you're saying that you you could use this type of getting started with Facebook ads for a pre-sell where you're running Absolutely. ads to, let's say, a webinar or some kind of freebie that will get them into that pre-sell funnel so you could pre-sell your course before you've actually created it. Absolutely. So it's like, OK, it, so this now becomes your strategy. So it's like, OK, we're, we're just basically adding on a little bit to the strategy that we just talked about. So now we're saying, OK, cool. Now we need to get people onto a, a webinar that we're going to do where we haven't created the course yet, but we're going to pre-sell into this course that I'm going to create on the webinar. 
So now my end goal here is to get people, maybe you're doing like a founders group or a beta group or something like that. And you're only going to take 30 people or something into this beta version of your course. So that becomes, okay, cool. My end goal is to get people to sign up for my course. What's the vehicle? How I'm going to do that? Well, I'm going to do that on the webinar. So now I know, okay, cool. I have to, my end goal is to get people to fill out my order form, give me their credit card for whatever you're charging for, you know, the beta group or founders group of your, of your course. Then it's the webinar, right? So we knew we have to get the webinar together and they were sending people from the webinar to the order form to, to purchase. How do we get people to the webinar? Well, they register, right? So we need a landing page. So again, we're working backwards to come up with our strategy. And, and what, what I like also about this exercise of working backwards is it also gives, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Is it also gives us like a checklist of things that we need to make sure we have in place. Yes. So in this example here, we know that we need to have a webinar, you know, we need to, okay, cool. Check. We need to have the slides done. We need to have an order form, some way to take money, maybe whether it's Sam card or whatever that is. Then we need to have an email CRM so that we can send people emails saying, hey, don't forget our webinar is coming up on you know Thursday at 10 a.m. or whatever. And then we need to have a registration page. So it's like a checklist of the things that we need to have because everyone always like that's a big source of confusion. And I know that you can attest to this, too, that from the questions and stuff that you get from your students as far as like, okay, I get this, but now you get kind of lost in like the technical side yes. and God knows I am not a techie person. Ask my team. I am not a technical person, but when, when you can break it down like that and have sort of like a, a checklist of things like, okay, cool. I need a landing page. Great. Got lead pages. I can go in there, grab a template and I can have that done really, really quickly. So just this whole working backwards strategy not only gives you the strategy of what you're going to do, but also gives you a checklist of what you need to accomplish. I love a checklist always. So let me ask you a few quick questions. Let me paint a picture for you. And you talk to me about the best way to approach this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use the example again. I'm not ready to sell anything just yet. And I'm actually yep. not even going to pre-sell. Cool. What I want to do is I want to grow my list to get my first thousand subscribers. And I want to eventually sell an online training program to them. But right now I have this really awesome blueprint yep. and I'm not going to get into the niche because that part's not important, but I've got this really great blueprint. I know my audience is going to find it valuable. It's easy to digest. There's some quick wins in there. So my audience can get some quick wins and think, wow, that's so good. What else do you got? I can't wait to dive in more. So it's a perfect lead magnet. Mm -hmm. So would a blueprint PDF like this work with a Facebook ad strategy, or are you thinking that there's another type of lead magnet that is better for list building? Well, I mean, there's no better. I, I always kind of give people a hard time when they're asked, like during my Q and A's or they're asking me a question or whatever. It's like, what's the best or yes. is, is this the way to do it? And so it's like, it just, I mean, my audience will, they'll roll their eyes and they'll say, oh God, Rick's going to say it's just about testing because <laughs> it is. I mean, you just have to test that. But I like the blueprint idea, but you, you had a few key words in there that really jumped out for me. That is what really makes the difference. And you and I talk about this a lot when it comes to having a lead magnet or a freebie giveaway or something like that. It's got to be quickly actionable. You know, I was talking to somebody on Messenger the other day and they were like, well, I have a 30 page ebook guide for whatever their niche was. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, what do you teach? Like, I was trying to get some more information about that. And it's too long. Like, think about like, I know that if I see something and I download it and it's I, I know that it's that long, I'm never going to get through it. I'm yes. never going to consume it. So but true. if you give somebody a blueprint that they that's like quick wins, very actionable in just a matter of minutes. Now we're talking because if you can give somebody who is your ideal audience a quick win, then you've hooked them. And I don't mean that like a scammy kind of way. I mean, like they now see you as, look, this person can provide me value and help me in my business right now. I'm going to keep going back to them for more information. So I like the idea of the blueprint. And I would actually test it two different ways. I would test it from going from Facebook ad directly to, you know, that offer of the blueprint. And also the other strategy I know that you talk a lot about, Amy, is just having a, a golden piece of content yeah. on your site in an article or a video or whatever that might be. And, and basically sending people from your ad to that piece of content 
and then having your blueprint basically be within that content for them to download or on the sidebar. And so what you're doing there is you're building your retargeting audience of people who are coming to that post or that video. And for those people who don't actually opt into your blueprint at that point, you can turn around and retarget them with the blueprint offer. I'm so glad you said that because a lot of students in my courses will do something called the fill up formula, which is a formula I created to help them start growing their email list before they're ready to do their webinars. And one thing, and I teach it just like that, create a golden post and in there put a content upgrade so people can opt in. And they'll say, Amy, I'm running ads to the post, but I'm not getting enough signups. And really where I think the value of that whole strategy is, is in the retargeting. Yeah. And so you can go back and retarget all those people that went to the post and you could then send them directly to the freebie that you created inside of that post. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot you could do with that. Okay, so let's just pretend for the sake of moving forward that I've got this blueprint. I'm going to experiment with it. I'm going to set up a Facebook ad, drive traffic to an opt-in page where people can download my blueprint. And then once they opt in, they hit my thank you page where I'm going to be strategic. And this has nothing to do with the Facebook ad, but I'm going to be strategic and I'm going to encourage them to go, let's say, listen to one of my podcast episodes now that they've opted in or go mm -hmm. check out a video I created. So I'm going to continue the conversation with them. And then of course, email them the freebie where in that freebie, I can start the relationship with them. Yep, exactly. Okay. All right. So that's basically what we're talking about here. But what's important before we move on is that it's not just about the ad to the landing page to opting in and sending out the confirmation email that you just signed up for my freebie. What Rick is saying is you got to start with that end game, because if you don't know where eventually you want to lead this new audience, AKA become customers of yours, if you have no concept of what that might look like, what you might sell, you are wasting your money growing an email list. Would you agree, Rick? Yeah, exactly. And I got this question actually on one of my, one of the Q and A's of one of my webinars this week, and they said, is it smart to use Facebook ads to grow my email list if I've not yet created my program that I want to do? And it was a case of like, all right, this person was going to create the program. I don't know when, but they did, they did know that they wanted to sell that program. And this is exactly what you're talking about here, Amy, as far as, look, do I, should I grow my email list? Should I be spending some money on and Facebook ads to grow my email list when I don't have something to sell right now? As long as you know that you are going to have something to sell, maybe it's however far down the road, that's part of your plan. Like you're, you're like, okay, I'm going to grow my email list because I eventually want to sell X, Y, Z. And I'm going to use this building my email list to grow my list, build the relationships and then, and offer them value so that when I do have something, that's who I'm going to offer it to. Yes. And just imagine if you grow your email list right now and you're nurturing your audience every single week, you're reaching out to them. It may be through a short term nurture sequence that you create, or it may be your weekly emails to your podcast or to your blog post, whatever it might be. I encourage you to do even more in terms of asking them questions, engaging with them, building that relationship. And I promise you, because I have lived this when you do that, when you're ready to actually launch anything, it is a whole different ball game when you have an audience via email that has been paying attention and they're engaged with you. The first time I launched was to a list of 600 people that I rarely emailed. They had no idea really who I was or what I was about, even though they were on my email list and I launched to crickets. I remember it like it was yesterday. So it doesn't matter the size of your list if you're not keeping them engaged. And also if you do a really good job of targeting who signs up for this blueprint, you're going to see a huge uptake in sales when you are ready to promote because you have the right people on your list, which yep. leads us seamlessly. I didn't even mean to do that into our next section of this getting started with Facebook ads list building series. It leads us right into targeting. Do you think it's a good time to jump there? Absolutely. I do want to jump back really fast talking about, you mentioned the blueprint there. Yes. And I realized that, that a lot of people have a hard time coming up with what that lead magnet or freebie should be. Yes. And so in this case here, we're talking about a blueprint. Well, we made the assumption in the very beginning that these people are coaches, consultants, you know, that we are these hypotheticals that we're talking about right now. Well, 
that's awesome because you can have direct conversations with your with your clients and your customers and you can learn about what it is that they need. What are they struggling with that you can help them solve? And that's where you come up with your lead magnet topics, you know, because you're having those conversations, you get to talk to them, hear from them. One of the best things that I ever did, and it took me, I remember this, it took me a year and a half into my business. I hopped on Skype with like five of my quote unquote ideal customers and just talked to them for like 15 minutes. And I learned so much and I got off those calls and I was like, I can't believe it took me, you know, an, a year and a half to do this because not only did I have insight into what they're struggling with and why they were buying from me and everything, but it also allowed me to use, like, they gave me the language that I can use in my ad copy, in my landing pages, in my emails. These are my ideal customers. So I'm just using the information that they're giving me and how I can help them in everything I'm doing, especially with those lead magnets that we are sending our ads to. I think this is so overlooked because it's a little bit awkward and uncomfortable for some people to get on those Skype calls and ask those questions. But every single one of my peers has said exactly what you said in the sense of, why didn't I do it sooner? Or Mm. it was such an aha moment when I finally did it. I mean, I remember there's a gal in one of my programs, her name is Michelle Evans. And I remember when she got on the call with me and walked me through her experience with one of my programs and it like busted open all these ideas that I wasn't even thinking about. And I'm not one to like to get on the phone and talk to customers because I get a little bit nervous, but I'm so glad I finally sat down and did that with Michelle and a few others. But it's always that moment we think about, like, I remember when I did that finally and what a difference it made. Yeah. I mean, if you have 500 people on your email list, that is a small enough list to be working through to try to have conversations with them. Yes. And it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to be on the phone for an hour. I mean, you could be literally five minute conversations with people and people want to be heard. So you're hearing from them, you're hearing how you can serve them and maybe you're able to, you know, to quickly help them while you're on the phone. But like that is just invaluable. And it's just one of those things that a lot of people don't want to take the time to do, but yet can be literally change your business very quickly. Completely. Okay. So So targeting, let's switch gears (laughs) into targeting. Now, remember we've talked about targeting on the show before. I'll actually link to one of my favorite episodes, Rick and I did about getting started with targeting, but we want to put it in the context here in terms of the scenario we've painted for you, but also there's so much you can do with targeting, but Rick's going to talk about where to start and how not to bite off more than you can chew, but get really strategic with it from the get go. Yeah. So we're going to keep it very, very basic when it comes to targeting, but still strategic, still strategic. Yes. And, and cause guys, as you just mentioned, I mean, there's all kinds of ways to target your ideal audience on, on Facebook. So I want to start with a, with the, with the very basics, but then also I do want to mention sort of really what, and I've talked to people at Facebook about this very recently about what they really want you to be doing from a targeting perspective, like how they see their users, how their users should be using the targeting. So I'll talk about that briefly here in just a second. But if we're talking about just getting started with your targeting, but yet being very strategic about it, and we're assuming we're, again, we're assuming we have a small email list of like 500 people or less. So we're not necessarily at that point going to be using custom audio. Like we're not, we're not uploading our email list at that point. We're not creating any lookalike audiences. We're also assuming that we're not getting a whole lot of traffic to our website, which is fine. We like we got to start somewhere, right? Well, we can start by by targeting those cold audiences, if you will, on Facebook in the detailed targeting section. And this is the stereotypical type of targeting that most people think of when they think of Facebook ads. This is that, you know, I want to target people who have an interest in such and such Facebook page. And so this really comes down to knowing who your target audience is. And so for those of you who are working as a coach or a consultant and you have clients really be detailed in trying to understand who those people are, obviously demographic and and age and where they live and that sort of thing. But what are also are they interested in? Who are they following online? Maybe who are your competitors in this space? Okay. So, and then we can also, I think one thing, and again, this is stepping back from the super basic a little bit, but one thing I do want to mention is 
making sure that when you're thinking about your target audience, so what I like to do is compile a list. So I'll, I'll open up, open up Evernote basically. And I start making a list of all of the target audiences I think are relevant to my target customer. And so once I'm doing that, or I should say when I'm doing that, one thing I definitely want to be including is what brands or what types of places do my customer target customer, where do they shop? Okay. What I mean by that is for, as an example, if I'm a yoga, if I'm in the yoga niche, for example, and I'm trying to reach women between the age of, let's just say 25 and 50 who are interested in yoga. Okay, cool. I can target that, but don't forget to take a step back and think about what also, what brands are they interested in as well? So I probably really want to try targeting Lululemon, for example, or Lorna Jane, or like these are brands that people doing yoga are likely wearing, you know, are popular with the yoga niche. They're probably also maybe shopping at Whole Foods, that sort of thing. So you have to think about it, we have to take a step back and think about it from a holistic standpoint. But when you're just starting, it's like, okay, tr when you start brainstorming the different interests that you think are relevant to your, your niche, start create, is it, do you say niche or niche? I've started to say niche. I think it's fancier. <laughs> it, it is fancier. I had, uh, I had people from Europe on, and I say Europe just because there was a variety of people giving me a hard time about it. They were from like <laughs> London or whatever. They were like, I think it's funny how, what, how you say that word. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> they were making fun of you. They, they were making fun of me basically. Yeah. <laughs> so as you're listing out, you know, the different, different interests that are relevant to your niche, then you're just kind of starting to compile a list of what you think is most relevant to your niche. And that includes, other people in your niche who are similar to you, who are your competitors? You know, what are those brands that like, as I mentioned, where are they shopping and that sort of thing? And I will say that, so audience insights is a great tool. And I, I would say that it went through a period over the past couple months of it giving just complete crap information. <laughs> like it went from really good to meaning like you can go into audience insights. It's a free tool within ads manager yeah. and you can type in, let's just say I type in Amy Porterfield and then it's going to give me a list of similar Facebook pages to you. Well, it was really, really good for a long time and then went for a few months where I don't know what happened. Like the results were just completely irrelevant. Like I think it was just a big bug. Well, I've checked it a few times recently and the results have gotten much better again. Oh, thank goodness. So, so that's a good thing. See, I get all excited. Like my voice cracks. <laughs> <laughs> and so, You're like a little boy. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I love talking about this. So when, so I would be using audience insights to again, be compiling that list. So just to start out with my targeting, I'm going to start right at the top of my list and say, you know what? I feel like this interest right here or this demographic or this behavior is the most related to who I want to reach with my ad. I'm going to start just right there. I'm going to get one ad set up with one target in there. I'm going to do, let's just say I'm going to start off with $10 a day and that's it. Because from there, like, and again, like you're just starting off with just that one target. Like we're keeping this extremely bait. Do you, do we want to keep this like as basic as that? Well, what were you thinking? Where were you going? Well, because then you can add more ad sets in there. Like you can add additional target audiences in there depending on how much you want to spend. I'm just thinking, all right, we're going to get started with like $10 a day. Yes. And I, I want to do like one target audience. I like now, that. Now, now, I will say that the algorithm with, on, with Facebook ads has really been changing a lot lately. It's gotten a lot better. It's gotten a lot more, a lot more smarter. It's a lot, a lot smarter. It's gotten a lot smarter. <laughs> that wasn't a very smart way it's to say It's become that. a smarty pants. It has become a smarty <laughs> pants. So what it's looking for is the larger the audience that you can get in there, meaning like if you can be in that at least 500,000, so to say like 2 million range, on your audience size per ad set, you're giving the algorithm more data to work with. Okay. And so in that case there, if you select, if you find an interest, you're like, Ooh, that's a really good interest. I can target them. That's very relevant to my industry. And I put it in there and it's only like, let's just say it's a hundred thousand people. Then you do that. You might want to consider finding, you know, moving next on your list of the target audiences that you've brainstormed and put that in there also and see what that does to your audience size. So maybe that jumps it up to 400,000. Okay. Okay. And so to try to get it into that, into that range. Now, what's always been the case, and I do think that they'll move to 
fixing this at some point is you won't have any insight into metrics, which we're gonna, I know we're going to talk about later on, into which of those interest is performing the best for you when you group them together in, within one ad set. Okay. Okay. But the, again, the reason that we might want to do that is to increase that audience size to give the algorithm a little bit more data to work with. You know, the potential audience size reach is a little bit larger. So that's how I would approach it. Forgive me for this because you might have said it and I'm really paying attention. So I can't believe I missed it if I did. But did you already talk about this is a question that comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. What should that audience size be? Yeah, I like to try to get it somewhere between 500,000 and 2 million ish. Gotcha. Did you say that? And I totally missed it. I did. It's okay. Dang it. I'm trying to be a good student. Keep in mind, keep in mind if you're like a local business or something like that and your audience size is not that large, mm -hmm. it's okay. It's okay. okay. Well, we're talking like ideal here. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and keep in mind if you get into like a lookalike audience, then you're talking about at least like 2.1 million. Okay, cool. That's all right. Okay. Now, when we're talking about getting started with targeting, I really do love audience insights. So I'm glad you said that they came around and they're doing a better job yep. in helping you find your target market there. So with that, I'm going to make a video and it's just going to be a short video in the show notes where I'm going to walk you through how I would use audience insights to find more Facebook pages to target, because there's a few things that you might not know about audience insights that you can really make it work for you. So for those of you who don't even know what audience insights is about, it's a tool inside of Facebook that you could plug in some information and then get a bunch of ideas for other pages that you might want to target with your Facebook ads. And I've been using it forever back in the day. I can't believe how long it's been around actually. And I love that it's still a viable tool. Yeah. So I'm going to make a video on my show notes to walk you through how to get started, how to find it and how I use it to get a bunch of ideas for targeting. So I just wanted to offer that to all of you. You'll find it at amyporterfield.com forward slash one seven two. The other thing too, Amy, that it, that it will give you in addition to like other pages is if like, like, let's just say I put you into audience insights, it's also going to give me a demographic breakdown of the people who are on Facebook who are interested in you. So it'll say like 77% women, 23% men, and then it'll give me an age range. I mean, so good. It'll break it down. So they'll say, oh, well, if I'm really like, you know, if I'm doing the whole 80, 20 here and I want to put, I'm like, all right, I have very limited budget. Maybe I only since 77% of your audience is women. Well, maybe I only, only want to target women when I'm targeting you. And I know that I'm targeting, you know, so let's just say 25 to 44, let's just say. So it'll, it'll give you that information too, so that you can really hone in on the targeting. I'm so glad you brought that up. We are experimenting with some brand new ads for my webinars that convert program and I cater to men and women. So I'm not a business that is just for female entrepreneurs. Right. However, I do have more women in my programs than men. And for the first time, we actually wrote an ad that is speaking just to women entrepreneurs. And of course, we're just targeting women in that ad. I can't believe I've never done this before, but looking at our metrics, it was obvious that this could be a really great strategy. So I'll keep you guys updated on how that goes. But I'm so glad you just said that that was a good idea. Remind me to make sure that because I could go into that right now, but we'll make sure that we talk about that during the metrics okay. portion of our, of our discussion here, because that is it's a little bit more advanced, but we should definitely, since we're talking about that right now, we should definitely talk about it a little bit later. Okay. So I'm going to bring that topic up again when we get to metrics. Yep. Okay. So I want to mention that there are so many different ways that you can target with your Facebook ads and targeting to me, two things. Number one, it's the, my favorite thing about Facebook ads. I feel like you can get creative. You could find new audiences. There's so many options. So if you told me what's my favorite or asked me what's your favorite thing about the opportunities inside of Facebook advertising, I definitely say it was targeting. Now with that, I also will say there are so many opportunities that it can be overwhelming. You've got lookalike audiences, you've got retargeting, you can obviously target other Facebook pages, and there's things you can do beyond that. But Rick is saying that if you're just getting started, 
let's start with targeting other Facebook pages. And I'm going to link to some other targeting episodes that Rick and I have done. If you want to go beyond that with lookalike audiences, retargeting, of course, you could target your own Facebook fans, which I think should probably be in that beginner strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and, the the reason I didn't go right there is because a lot of people who are just starting out exactly. don't really have many yep. fans on there. And so the question inevitably comes up, should I be spending money on like ads? And if you're just starting out, I don't think that you should. I don't think it's a good strategy. And the reason for that is because, look, we're trying to we're trying to build our email list, not necessarily get fans right off the bat. And when you do run ads where you are sending people to that lead magnet or download that blueprint, you are going to get fans that you're going to get likes off of that ad. You're gonna, if they're like, it's like a secondary benefit, even though your, your primary objective is conversions, you are going to get likes off of that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Before we move on to getting started with <laughs> setting stuff up, I do want to finish off that tease from before about targeting as far as like what Facebook, what I've been seeing, what, what Ooh, Facebook yes. really wants you to be doing. Facebook really wants you to be building custom audiences as quickly as you can and then turning those audiences or creating lookalike audiences, I should say, from those custom audiences. So what the heck do I mean by that? Basically, the faster that you can build retargeting audiences, so people coming to your website, for example, the faster that you can build those audiences of people visiting your website and then creating lookalike audiences from those people, the algorithm has gotten much smarter. So the effectiveness of the, of the lookalike has gotten much better as well. And so this, again, this we can you just mentioned that there's tons of different ways you can do this, but the faster that you can build lists, and again, as I mentioned before, this is more advanced stuff, but the faster that you can build lists of like your customers, you know, like let's just say if you have, a list of your highest paying customers. Well, the quicker that you can have a list like that, and then you can create a lookalike audience out of that audience. Now we're talking here. So think of it like, again, this is like big picture here and something to work towards if you're just starting out. The faster that you can build really quality custom audiences and then turn those audiences into lookalike audiences, that's really where, that's really where Facebook wants you to go. And it's incredibly powerful. We use this yes. strategy all the time and it works well. Yep, exactly. Okay, I think this is a perfect place to wrap up for today, just so you don't feel completely overwhelmed if you're getting started with Facebook ads. And we will pick up next week around the Power Editor and how to get started inside the Power Editor with a list building Facebook ad campaign. And also talk about metrics and analytics if you're just starting out, because believe me, there are a lot of analytics, but you do not need to focus on all of them when you just start to get things rolling. So I can't wait to come back here again next week with Rick Mulready, of course, where we dive into even more getting started with Facebook ads goodness. I'll see you here next week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com. 